Good morning, spaceman. This is Captain Collins. Welcome back to Space Operations Delta and X4 Foundations. Beta 7 of patch 4.1 just dropped today. And I want to go through this changelog with you together. And I will also show you afterwards in game what these changes mean for X4. Before we start, I stream from Sunday to Thursday on Twitch.tv slash Captain Collins. A lot of you from YouTube already came over and said hello, and I'm always very happy to have these happening in my stream. Thank you so much for that. And while we're watching the scenery of a fight for a video that I already prepared for the next big thing, we are taking a look at Beta 7 4.1, the change log. We do have a lot of improvements and fixes this time, and nothing is added or nothing is even a new feature in there or anything else. That tells me that Egosoft is maybe trying to push that as the last beta out there to finally get 4.1, the update, going alive. So for the last steps that they do before 4.1 gets official, they are trying to uh, balance the last few things out so that you get the best experience when you go in and start with the custom game starts. And custom game starts and the base builder are two things that they are still working on and improving. So let's go quickly through that changelog and afterwards have a look in game what that means. We start with an improved docking of non-capital ships. This is really working now. Uh, we tried that on stream and it seems to be way smoother when S-Class fighters trying to dock again at a carrier. And also it is faster though it doesn't really look that nice but it's working that S-Class ships also dock at stations way faster than before. When in system, out of system it doesn't even matter because it's a different mechanism there. Improved capital ship combat movement when pursuing fleeing targets. Fine. Improved selling behavior of station based miners assigned to stations that require more than one mineable resource. We saw that change a few times appearing already in the change logs in 4.1. And that is a good thing because they're still trying to improve and improve and improve the station based miners, especially when a station needs more than a single resource and a lot of people already complained about that a lot of people are complaining about that in comment sections or in the stream and they are working extremely hard on that improved speed display in crosshair we will take a look at the crosshair later or the hut itself improved distribution of crew roles for players owned ships in custom game starts now we go into the custom game start section so you have a few things for the custom game start here you have the crew roles for player owned ships. You have the relation budget balancing is new improved and an improved visualization of property budget costs in custom game starts. And since we only have three improvements in the custom game start section, that seems at least for me that the custom game start editor is pretty much done after that. One more thing to stabilize the game, improved handling of out of GPU memory conditions. Interestingly, they removed also some things, like for example, they removed the AMD Fidelity Super Resolution support. We had a few tests with the FSR feature in the game, and I always had the feeling that if you want to improve your FPS for about 20% in your game, you had to reduce the quality of X4 to about 50%. So the quality reduction for the amount of speed that you gain, that was just not fitting. And I think it's a good way to remove the support for now, although it's still a new feature and maybe that needs a little bit more configuration. Another thing, remove visualization of module connections in build menu while not dragging module. We'll take a look at that. This is something that can get now very confusing when you try to build the base, especially now that you can rotate the pieces 360 degrees. We'll take a look at that later. The next big chunk are always fixes. We go really quickly over that. We're starting with the first two here. Fixed NPC station managers sometimes giving double rewards and fixed excessive damage when missiles hit certain targets. Nani? That seems like two exploits were fixed there. Fixed laser towers sometimes locking on distant targets when hostile targets are within fire range. That's good. Fixed split factions not rebuilding trading stations. Yikes, <laughs> finally. 
Fix shuffle modules option in station editor when modules include Terran solar panels. Fix Bozo Tar dialog not playing when browsing search menu. I want to hear Bozo Tar when I'm in the menu. There are a few fixes for the custom game starts. Also, as you can read in here, custom game start here, custom game start, custom game start, custom game start. A lot of custom game start features are now improved. And there is something added actually into the game, which they have not here in this change log. And that's what we're going to take a look at right now. So here we are in our cockpit and there is a small change where my mouse is right there. There are a few things added to your HUD and we go from left to right. The first thing when I take my HOTAS here and I roll over, you see the first symbol going blue. Blue always means enabled. This is auto rotation. The second one that is in here is a something that you can find in the menu in your settings. Game settings, it is the collision avoidance. If you turn that on, the collision avoidance is then enabled. It's not orange because it's not toggled and will work when you're trying to fly onto an object. Let me show you that really quick. So when this option is enabled and you're trying to fly against something, there you can see it's toggling on blue. It's trying to avoid the collision, but of course it cannot be that fast. Next thing here is the flight assist enabled or disabled. Blue enabled, orange disabled. Next one is the auto aiming. Whenever you have something on target, this thing here is enabled. That means that auto targeting is enabled, which is not added there at the moment. It's a small compass here. That's the fifth one. It is the autopilot. As you can see right now, it is enabled. Autopilot is there. So you do have a few more options in your HUD now. Let me show you one of the other new options. If we take a look into the planning menu here, this is a something that they change right now. So if you take a part and you put it into your building block and you usually go in here and you are maybe rotating your part, you will miss the lines that do connect this part now to possible connection spots that are usually there. But if we take that part and we're dragging it, as you see, these connections are now still available. You can just connect it there wherever you want. But it's not possible. It's not there anymore when you are rotating the part. One thing that I saw today for the first time, you should definitely click once at this gear. This gear is the editor settings. So for example, if you do get FPS hits while you are in your building, building menu, then just click on show environment and you are back in the old building visuals and these visuals will help you with some FPS issues. If you like it, keep it on. Then also discrete angle step. Did you ever saw that when you are rotating your parts, you can also hold down shift and the part does have specific angles at which it rotates. These angles can be changed right here. So if you want to have a 90 degree angle, for example, you can do that. Now, when you hold down shift and you rotate the item, it rotates at 90 degrees. There are two options for using this angle step. And one thing is I would set this thing at 30 degrees if you are using something like a split module because these split modules do not only have these shapes, they also have like 45 degree shapes. And when you have 30 degree steps, then you will see that you are able to get every single connector connected at every single direction. For every other module, or if you're not using split modules, split connectors or whatever, then 45 degree is pretty good, pretty sufficient. If you want to have something in between, you're using split and other things, then maybe take 15 degrees, then you can use it with both of these parts. But as I said, the connection lines are just now gone. There is something going on on here, and I just give you a quick glimpse of what I'm right now preparing. This is a fleet that I'm preparing, the carrier fleet. 
this fleet here will showcase supplying a fleet and so on. But with this fleet, I also tested out the docking abilities of S-Class ships to a carrier. And this works now really good, even if you're in system and directly looking at these ships, they are now docking quite fast and you can utilize fleets way better. So while that was it already for that update, let me just show you our small fight in here while we're going. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care out there. Stay safe and healthy. See you soon for the next video about auxiliary ships and fleets and resupplying. That will be a thing. If you're new in here and you saw that for the first time, please consider subscribing. And thank you. Have a good time. Goodbye.